Hello, my name is Jacob. So the primary goal of this project was to design a vertical takeoff landing model aircraft and enter the Midwest Regional UAS competition, which is sponsored by NASA. The vertical takeoff landing aircraft is able to raise up into the sky like a quadcopter and is able to fly like a plane. It has solar battery charging capabilities and is able to fly via autopilot. In the end, it will drop a glow stick at a specified location and also implement a video camera. The flight controller we're using for this project is the PixHawk 4. This controller, along with Q-Ground Control, allows us to modify many aircraft parameters. We can control the different channels for each input, the sensitivity of an input, and whether or not it is inverted, the type of VTOL airframe we are using, different flight modes such as manual, stabilized, or aerobatic mode, and other parameters. The main function of Q-Ground Control that we used was the transition from quadcopter mode to forward flight mode. Changing the settings which control the VTOL transition, such as the minimum transition time or the motor ramp up time, allowed us to create a smooth transition in both into and out of vertical flight mode. We also implemented an abort window within the transition time, which allowed us to have an emergency stop switch to go immediately back to quadcopter mode if our transition needs to be aborted for some reason. Now, Here's Evan to talk about the quadcopter mode and forward flight mode. The aircraft we made has three different flight modes. It has a quadcopter mode where it uses a flight controller to produce level flight in a vertical takeoff mode. The second flight mode that we have is a transition mode where we transition from quadcopter to regular airplane. And we have all five motors spinning. And after a period of time, the thrust slowly decreases on our vertical motors as we generate lift from gaining airspeed with the pusher prop. In forward flight mode, we have traditional control surfaces like a regular plane using ailerons, rudder, and elevator. And it also allows us to fly much more efficiently than a quadcopter because we're only running one motor instead of four. The transitions and forward flight and quadcopter gave us a lot of trouble in design. And Ryan is going to talk about those problems next. While building the aircraft and programming the flight controller, we ran into a lot of problems. First off, we were using an aircraft that was from a previous group working on the project. There were several wiring issues that needed to be sorted out. Wires were not connected, and the connections that were made were not correct. We learned how to completely rewire the aircraft and then optimize the process of accessing the connections. We ran into more issues while getting the aircraft to fly. As you can see, the aircraft has a tendency to yaw to the right. The other problem which is noticeable in this clip is that the aircraft is barely maintaining a hover a few inches off the ground. The battery we are using is a 3-cell LiPo battery. This means that its full charge is 12.6 volts and its normal voltage is 11.1 volts. During this flight, the voltage was about 11.6 volts. However, the aircraft was not capable of lifting more than a few inches off the ground. The yaw was caused by a faulty electronic speed controller, which the team exchanged for one that they had on hand. They also thought that the aircraft was unable to climb higher due to its excessive weight. So they removed weight from the wings, the heaviest part of the aircraft, and found that the aircraft was indeed able to climb higher in quadcopter mode. However, the aircraft would soon begin to descend again. The team then calculated how much thrust would be required for the aircraft to behave as we would expect it to. We found that not only the battery we were using was not able to supply a high enough current for a long enough time, but also the motors that we were using were not able to provide enough thrust to lift the weight of the aircraft. We bought a new battery with a higher C rating as well as new motors and went to work on building a lighter aircraft out of less dense foam board. After making these changes, we were finally able to fly in quadcopter mode as we expected. The final problem the team faced this semester was the transition to forward flight mode. When proper procedure was not in place and the transition duration was not tuned correctly, the results were catastrophic. Oh, okay. However, once the team ensured proper procedure was followed and the aircraft was properly tuned, they accomplished oh their God. goal of flying by the end of the semester. Let it down, he's... Pick it up! Nice! <laughs> Woo! That's what's up, dude! <laughs> 
You have to go so high. Dude. <laughs> in the future, we will add the glow stick dropper, integrate our solar panels, and mount the FPV camera. We will also tune the autopilot so that the airplane will be able to successfully fly itself.